Uh, hi, hello everybody. This is Brahm again. Um, I want to tell a story today about how growth is impacting uh, the balance in the supply chain triangle. Yesterday we were nominated with Solventure for the Trans Gazellen. Trans Gazellen in uh, Belgium are companies uh, which are showing consistent growth over five years uh, time in sales revenue, in number of people and also in cash flow. And it made me wonder like I should explain how in my experience growth is impacting balance uh, in the supply chain triangle. Well, let's recap that uh, if we look at the triangle service, the service corner uh, is in fact the driver for growth, for sales growth. If you combine service and cost, uh, or if you combine co a top line and cost, you get to uh, a metric like uh, the EBIT, a margin type of metric, and in the end the triangle is about uh, not just managing growth or margin, but looking at the margin generated of the capital employed, uh, as measured by the return on capital employed. And um, what I see in general is that uh, if companies have a focus on growth, that uh, the, the triangle suffers, that uh, uh, if companies are relentlessly pursuing growth, uh, they might forgo profits and they might also forgo uh, return on capital employed. Does that mean that the triangle doesn't hold uh, when we are aggressively pursuing, uh, for instance, an increase in market share? Well, I don't think so. Uh, actually, um, if we look at, let us say, relentlessly pursuing growth, Typical examples could be like the growth of Amazon or the growth of a company like Zalando uh, in Europe or a company like Ball.com in the Netherlands and Belgium. What we see is that these, these companies are known for not making a profit over a longer period, uh, maybe five years or 10 years or 15 years time. But uh, we should uh, consider this as uh, deliberately reinvesting uh, profits. Yeah? So. Uh, we say, well, instead of uh, returning 100 euros or 100 dollars to the shareholder today, we will be reinvesting that money and uh, the, the investor might potentially even invest extra money today because uh, the investor is aware that the future return that can be earned is bigger than any other uh, investment he would have in portfolio today. So instead of, let us say, just making a loss, uh, we are convinced that in these specific cases, uh, investors are deliber deliberately, uh, let us say, uh, letting go of the hundred dollar or the hundred euro of return today to reinvest it uh, because they are aware that in these specific conditions, the future returns will be even bigger than uh, what can be earned uh, on the money today. And that's not necessarily how all companies work. So uh, in general, we believe that a lot of companies are top line driven. And uh, if they don't get to the top line objective, then they will start making all type of operational costs just to protect the top line. So they might start ignoring margin and they will also be investing like in product line extension. So they will be carrying extra inventory. Uh, or they might do extra investments just to protect the top line. But in this case, it's not necessarily a deliberate choice. So uh, because the top line is under pressure, only at the end of the year, they will discover that it was a bad year because you know, maybe they, did, they didn't even make the top line. But in any case, it was at a as an inferior uh, margin. And if you look at the return on capital employed, it's not where it should be. So there is a difference between deliberately pursuing growth and deliberately for 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 um, de deliberately letting go of current profits and reinvest in that into future uh, returns and a company which kind of is improvising along the year is finding out at the end of the year that profits are lower than expected but not let's say having planned for this uh, for instance uh, in the budgeting phase and why would companies react like that? Well, because uh, in general, some companies just like growth. Uh, it might have to do even with the ego of the CEO who wants to be the biggest company or who wants to be the fastest growing uh, company. 
Um, we do believe that growth is necessary. So uh, growth is necessary to, um, uh, let's say, create opportunities for talent in the company. Uh, growth in, in principle, uh, if we grow, uh, that might also uh, generate some economies of scale. So growth is also in general beneficial uh, for the profitability of the company. But um, we should not blindly pursue growth as we uh, see some companies do. So um, we, we, we should not assume that growth uh, does not make the balance in the triangle uh, any more important. If we really are willing to make a loss as we want to uh, more heavily invest into future returns, it remains a deliberate choice in that triangle uh, instead of some companies just finding out at the end of the year that uh, things didn't really go according to plan. So these are some of the thoughts we wanted to share based on uh, our own nomination for the Trans Gazella, which was focused on growth and uh, a growth in cash flow. So uh, let's say profitable growth. And uh, that's, of course, uh, where probably most of the companies uh, try uh, to be. Uh, so that's what I wanted to share. Hope you enjoyed and I will be back for more.